Welcome to the Clear to Send podcast, a podcast about wireless engineering, where we educate you on Wi-Fi technology, talk about design tips, troubleshooting, interviews, and the tools. Here are your hosts, Roel and Francois. Hi guys, welcome to a brand new episode of the Clear to Send podcast. This is episode number 269, and I'm Francois. I'm here with Roel this morning. Hey Roel, how are you? Hello, good morning. Good morning. And uh, today we're going to talk about Arista presenting and Mobility Field Day uh, 6, which happened in uh, mid July. And uh, I was fortunate to be one of the delegates, uh, you know, um, um, uh, being able to ask questions to the vendors presenting. And Arista was one of the vendors presenting at the event. And uh, we decided to talk about two specific topics that they approached when they, uh, when they presented uh, uh, different topics. And we wanted to talk about their overall cloud solution. Um, yeah, um, cloud vision. And, yeah, the, the cloud vision, you're right. And then we wanted to talk about the openness of the solution as well. Uh, yeah, that's how they defined uh, it, openness. The openness, <laughs> yeah. It's uh, a fancy word. Ar- Arista is an interesting company, right? Because the mm-hmm. Wi-Fi was acquired from Mojo. And the last time we saw Arista, I was there as a delegate on site. Um, the integration to Arista's cloud was not quite there yet. Uh, so they were, it was still very much two separate systems. And of course, like I kind of expected that because the acquisition was still pretty new. I wasn't expecting them to fully integrate Mojo into their cloud within a matter of months. Um, but now I think it's getting quite impressive what, what Arista has done over the last few years. Yeah, I agree. Like when they, they presented their overall cloud solution, I, was, I thought it was quite impressive. I thought that the amount of data they had in there uh, was quite impressive. And I thought also the, the amount of analysis they're doing with that data is, is quite uh, impressive as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and that's the trend we see with anybody with cloud is the amount of data that they are seeing, uh, grabbing. I mean, they don't store everything in the cloud, right? They don't. They're not keeping a payload. Uh, I guess for for privacy reasons, right? There's a lot of privacy issues. They're keeping a payload of of data, but they are analyzing data and and able to use this for their AI. So that'll be the trend. Uh, AI will probably be first, and then 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 maybe next year we'll start start hearing more about machine learning. But the first step is AI because people need help, right? They need an AI to help them <laughs> solve problems. Yeah. And I mean, you know, we've talked about this on the on the show multiple times. That's kind of like the train right now with any uh, networking vendors. Uh, they're building that uh, cloud solution with AI, so they can analyze whatever is going on on the network and try to give us some insights um try to find you know the the issues try to find the cause of different issues uh to help us you know provide a better user experience for the for the users um one thing that i thought was interesting in in arista is that they're you know they're looking more they look like they're looking past wi-fi so they're just not looking at layer two but they're also looking at the data and mm-hmm. the flows and the, the protocols. And they were talking about, I like the way they were, they were getting in details as well, in the technical details. Yeah. Um, and they were talking, remember when they were talking about TCP, mm-hmm. retries. And, and so what they tried to do is they tried to monitor, you know, the applications, monitor TCP, uh, retries. And then they tried to also correlate that to the layer two. So they'll also try to see, okay, you know, did I get some retransmission at the layer two as well when I got the retries? Or did something happen yeah. on the Wi Fi when I got some these retries? And they'll try to correlate the two uh, to get a, a better understanding of, of what's going on. And I thought that was, you know, a little different from what we've we've heard so far. Yeah, and, and when I saw that um, when they show their dashboard, I, I could see that they give you some of the data you want to see up front, right, on the layer two side, especially when it comes to retries and RSSI, kind of like the average of, of, of that of those values for all clients for each site. I, I like seeing that kind of data and drilling into it. But then 
again, it becomes a, all right, is any, is this RSSI quote unquote issue really an issue for a user, right? Because they, he was mentioning, uh, I think by default, they, they classify NEG 65 as a low RSSI, but there's a lot of devices that operate just fine on NEG 65 or even on NEG 70, especially stationary wireless devices like a printer, right? If a printer is on NEG 70, is it really having an issue if it's not, if it's printing properly, right? If someone says a print to it uh, and that question got brought up and I think uh, even Peter McKenzie was, it was giving them a lot of good questions because he was making reference to the correlation. Right. All right. If, if it's, if you're seeing TCP retransmissions, does that correlate to also the retries that's happening on wireless? And I think that they, they were able to answer it really briefly. Um, I think it needs a little bit more explanation for us to, to trust this solution. But again, with, any of these solutions, we're going to have to just trust that they're doing it properly. Right. They're not going to, I don't think any vendor is going to really show us, um, you know, what's under the covers here and how it actually works because that's kind of their, their bread and butter, but Mm -hmm. tying, tying into the whole flow of an application, I think is, is going to be where we aim for. Yeah. And I, I mean, they, they did go in some of the technical detail, which we, we haven't seen from any other vendors. So I, I really appreciated that. And especially when they tried to talk about uh, what they call the root cause analysis. So trying to understand why you have Wi-Fi issues. Uh, they actually, if you go back to the videos, you'll see that they had a, they had a slide and then you would see you know, a Wi-Fi issue. And there's two types of Wi-Fi issues you could have, like a connectivity issue, or you can have a performance issue. Yeah. Um, when you have a connectivity issue, they're saying it's it's very easy. You can go back into you know the the state machine of the uh, uh, 802.11 protocol and try to try to understand okay where is it failing? Is it authentication association? And then you can clearly get the information from the frames and then display that at the dashboard. That's like the easy part. Where it's harder is when you have performance issues, right? Um, yeah. Because you because monitor be more than just bunch. Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah, and it can be it can be because of a whole bunch of things, right? Um, it can be because of Wi-Fi, poor Wi-Fi drivers, uh, poor coverage, uh, interferences, um, you know, a whole bunch of things. So they were asking the questions, okay, how can we find an algorithm that will help us to understand why we're having a performance issue? And they came up with that slide with a whole bunch of, you know, um, potential issues with a whole bunch of arrows <laughs> to yeah. kind of find that, find out, you know, uh, what, what could be the issue. So they actually, you can see they put some thoughts into it, even though it, it it's not going to be perfect on hundred percent of the time. There's a lot of variable here, Yeah, but it um, can be improved. I think that's, I think that's the yeah. point they were making is like, here's where we're at. We can, because some people in the the delegates there would add in, "Hey, how about this?" But it's certainly something they can consider in the future. Yeah, exactly. I think to me, the fact that they they, they did all of this, they put some thoughts into it. I think it's already good, and the fact that they showed casing that to us, I I thought it was pretty interesting as well. Um, yeah, yeah. So, and, and, so, and having the if we go back to that performance, I think. Arista did a really good job here in telling us, um, because if, if we have issues, <clears throat> excuse me, if we have issues or a client or user has an issue, usually it's, it's something like, Hey, Wi-Fi slow. Or when you ask drill down a little bit further, they go, okay, what was slow? It's like, Oh, my video conferencing software. So now you can look up the user and be able to see was the video conferencing app slow, right? Which app was that? And how much of that time did the poor performance happen? And then drill in even further to determine if it's Wi-Fi related, right? Is it because a high contention is it because of high retries um or is it something beyond the wireless network maybe it was the app itself not able to successfully get you know whatever web pages it needed to get to operate i think going down to that level of detail and really showing it to you was was really cool i i like that because they showed you all the apps um 
mm-hmm. and you can add your own apps, your own custom apps, right? They, they weren't, you weren't limited to just the, the major app uh, companies out there like Slack and, and Zoom and whatnot. You could add your own custom apps and be able to track performance there as well. That's, that, that's impressive. And that also tied to the second topic we want to talk about, the openness, because <laughs> you can use Arista uh, even if you don't have Arista equipment yeah. uh, to gather information. We'll go there in a sec. Before that, I wanted to add that they also have their own virtual assistant. Yes. <laughs> that's called Ava or Ava. How do you pronounce Ava, that? Uh, Ava. Yeah. The, the U.S. version, Ava. <laughs> So, uh, it's it stands for it's actually an acronym that stands for Autom- autonomous virtual assist. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's kind of like their, um, I guess I don't know. Their AI person, right? You, yeah. I guess you can you can talk to it. You can liter- literally talk to it. I think they show the demo <laughs> talking to. It. <laughs> yeah. So w- we've seen vendors do that, right? Uh, yeah. So it's uh, uh, it's going to be a trend as well. I think. Yeah, I could see yeah. see them tying this into some sort of um, uh, Alexa app or something because the the demo they even showed with Ava and it, Ava does a whole lot, right? So it mm-hmm. it it looks at things, it ha- it understands how Wi Fi works, it has uh, it looks at the configuration, correlates a bunch of different data for you because what you can do then is open up an app and. And actually talk to it and say, hey, what are my top 10 applications being used right now? And it would go and grab that data for you and display it, which which was pretty cool. Yeah, so overall, the Arista cloud solution is very solid. The only uh, the only thing that, um, the only drawback, I guess, that we saw as delegates is that <clears throat> they, ha- they seem to have multiple applications in, in different dashboards. Mm-hmm. It's not like consolid- consolidated. And we didn't even talk about um, the fact that they also have an engine to analyze uh, 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 Wi-Fi frames, right? So they also have an, uh, an engine to analyze Wi-Fi frames and get some data out of it, uh, which is another dashboard as well. So it, it seems like it's a little sc- sc- scattered uh, around. They have a security dashboard and, and all of this. So mm, maybe they can just consolidate the solution that would be... Uh, no, yeah, I, I think there's still room to improve. Uh, they've had different, uh, I guess, views to, to see certain data for a while now. And mm-hmm. um, I think other vendors were the same way. They're starting to consolidate as well, but they still have multiple solutions for for looking at different types of data. But Arista's, I think the core part of everything is is really improving, especially if you've got Arista end to end. There's a, there's a lot of different uh, data and analysis that you can you can grab from Arista to be able to show you like, hey, this anomaly happened. What is this anomaly? Because now it's kind of that view is consolidated down, right? Because you can now see and drill in whether it's Wi-Fi related or switch related, something something in between uh, and be able to go, why was that different from my baseline? Because they are creating a baseline for you across mm-hmm. the board for your network. Mm-hmm. And they were talking about uh, how that baseline is working and how this you know, root code analysis algorithm is working. So if you want to hear more about this, uh, we'll put the link to the videos in the show notes so you can actually watch the presentations on your own. Um, and that brings us to uh, the second uh, topic we wanted to talk about, which is the openness of the solution. And we briefly talked about it during the presentation because I, I think they were running out of time. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 what, something that was weird to me is that they had this security presentation in the middle of the <laughs> Wi-Fi presentation that didn't really wasn't really relevant to the rest. But then that you know they took some time uh, away from other presentation, and so we we barely talked about the uh, the openness of the solution. But one thing that I, I really like with with um, Arista is that you know they they can actually integrate other elements, other equipment, sorry into their system and the way they do that is by using uh, open config yeah. with gnmi to communicate with these equipment which is i mean 
to me that's that sounds good that sounds like the future but other vendors are still working with like snmps and i right. would call like legacy you know uh, protocols even though it, if it's, it's still widely used but it's more like legacy ways of getting telemetry yeah uh, open config is is definitely you know uh, more future proof and um Probably more uh, towards a standards base across vendors, right? Exactly, exactly. And uh, related to the openness, yeah. So I was really um, happy to see this. I want to see more vendors do this because if we have open config across, supported across the board from every vendors, uh, it can make our our job really easier for us as well. You know, as engineers working with different vendors, you could think of deploying your own, your own developing your own tools. Yeah. Um, and your own you know, algorithms be, basically um i mm-hmm. think they talked about hey maybe you can make your own uh rm decisions and, and algorithms uh to how you want uh, i'm not sure how many people would actually move towards doing that maybe very few maybe the maybe the the big fortune 100 companies would would do something like that but being able to use different ap's maybe third party ap's but still leverage um arista's cloud would sound interesting uh and this is i think this is something that's been around since the mojo days is uh Mm -hmm. they've been trying to work on this for for many years now and under the open config which i think is still making a lot of good progress yeah yeah i I think we've heard about like white label switches and aps from arista before yep um so yeah, I was I was really happy to see this. I want to see more vendors doing it. Um, I think I asked a, vend- uh, a question about open ro- open config to another uh, vendor, and I don't think they understood my question, <laughs> which is concerning to me because uh, well, there's no focus for that vendor, right? Like, why work on yeah. why work on open config when you can just work on your own stuff. <laughs> Yeah, that, that to yeah. me, I think, is the challenge is trying to get other vendors on board because the other vendors have their own secret sauce, their own uh, butter that makes theirs much better than everyone else's. Right. Uh, so, I mean, I think that's a challenge is getting getting them to join open config and and put effort into it. And if we have a standard for managing, monitoring, networking, networking resources, that opens up a whole like a whole new possibilities for tools that as well that we use. So, you know, companies that build tools, they could leverage that and communicate with any vendor and have, you know, vendor neutral solutions. Um, yeah. Yeah. Stuff like this, you know, or even us, you know, as, as engineers working with different customers with different uh, equipment, we could have our little tools uh, to do some analysis, troubleshooting, uh, gather information, from our customer networks using open config regardless of what vendors they use we can just reuse our tools and invest some time into it so yeah i think that's a good point um because we haven't touched upon the tool side for open config it's always been about infrastructure but Mm -hmm. i think we can we can probably build a solution that would be end-to-end not only just configuring and monitoring uh, on the infrastructure side, but also being able to troubleshoot near the clients. And maybe that mm-hmm. means you can build an open uh, open app that you can install on, on a device and maybe get even more telemetry that way. But of course, maybe that means bringing these device vendors into open config, mm-hmm. who knows? And then you got the privacy issues again. And, and then now we're back to where we are today. <laughs> But you know, you know when uh, when we do troubleshoot, you know we spend a lot of time in like controllers or you know cloud interfaces, yeah. and, and we usually get the MAC address of the client with troubleshooting and then filtering to yeah. kind of see the stats. So we could, you know, if Open Config is supported everywhere, we could have our own like Grafana dashboard uh, into uh, the that we kind of connect to the. You know, to the network e- equipment when we arrive on site to do troubleshooting, we just put the MAC address of the client, and then it brings us the data we want to see, regardless of the customer we're troubleshooting. We always have the same dashboard with the same data, focusing on what we want to see instead yeah. of trying to look at data, plot it on the graph, understand what's going on, finding patterns. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I think there's there's so much 
capability there if we were to maybe look at open config a lot more i know some some companies are doing really interesting things with open config but again the challenge is getting some of these vendors on board who may not have everything implemented for open config or something mm-hmm. does need to be added but it's not a priority for for these companies yeah exactly, exactly. uh one thing that I wanted to ask you, Francois, what did you think about their security, not the IoT security, but like the whips? Because uh, I, I, I watched that video last night and I thought it was interesting how they would try to, uh, how they go about doing security for the Wi-Fi network. Because it's not just a simple whips you enable and then um, you have rogue detection. It actually goes further to determine what is a rogue? Is it really a rogue? And, and how they do, they, they, they had a process, uh, how they thought through this to determine where the, where the security issue actually lies. And I, <clears throat> I think that comes from the, uh, you know, the Mojo days or the airtight, airtight days. Remember it used yeah. to be called airtight before. Yeah. Uh, and, and that used to be like the airtight company used to be security focused. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it used to be with uh, a solution. So I think it comes from these days. And they just, like you said, they do it a little differently. Um, uh, it's I, like I, a added benefit, I guess, for... Mm-hmm. Uh, we'd, we'd have, you'd have to go through the video again, but they talked about some of these, uh, like, ARPs that they would send through, through uh, the network. And if it showed up also through a rogue AP, then, you know, it's a rogue on on the actual network, uh, then, then ways they would mitigate it either through art poisoning or uh, there's a lot of different, uh, things they looked at and a tree that they followed through trying to create these security or plug the security holes. And I thought it was kind of, kind of interesting, which they didn't dive too much into. It was just kind of like, a um, a few slides here and there again. I, I felt like all the vendors we're rushing through their presentations. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think it's um, I think it's important for you know for web solutions to to be able to uh, you know do this a little bit, a little extra work because most of the time you know how it works. We just uh, uh, turn the the feature on, and then we don't do anything about the alerts that we get because we get tons of false positives or right. You know, n- n- unlegitimate stuff, or you get the uh, opposite end where somebody doesn't know how it works. They enable it, and they're doing something illegal. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. So I think it, it's interesting to have a little bit more uh, granularity into the the way you detect the rogues. Uh, and like you said, it's a, it's a nice added bonus to the solution. Yeah. yeah. All right. So so that was. I mean, the the first two topics though, I I thought were. Where the key points for the ERISA presentation is the evolution of the cloud vision, uh, what they call it, their cloud platform, which is now fully integrated, right? It's not two separate things like the ERISA switches and, and Mojo APs. It's now just one cloud vision, which I guess mm-hmm. makes sense to the name. And then uh, them diving into the flow analysis of an application and giving you the quality of experience for a user versus just telling you how Wi-Fi is performing, right? Because uh, qu- the quali- quality of experience is really going to tell you the how Wi-Fi is doing versus just layer two details. And then I'm glad they're they're really wor- still working on this openness and open config, trying to leverage APIs with other systems and being it, giving you the ability to make make it your own, right? Your, your own Wi-Fi system, customize it to how you want. I think there, there is a market for that, especially like in different countries where maybe, um, some of these solutions cannot be easily affordable, but maybe using the openness portion, they can put together their own solutions. And then one thing that was really nice as well, that they, they told us not even during the live, I think it was after, when they did the the private session with us, um, but um, Praveen Bhakna, which used to be the founder of of Mojo, um, 
he uh, he also founded another company that's called 14 Trees Foundation, where they build they plant trees for every AP that Arista. Oh wow! Grow. Yeah, which is cool. Huh? Yeah, that's cool. Um, okay. And they planted one tree for each of the delegates too. Oh, nice! Uh, <laughs> yeah, we have. So we. So have, that's we what that screenshot is. I see here in our notes. <laughs> yeah, so that's the screenshot you see. So we each have our tree with a number in somewhere in India, and we can go uh, check the trees one day. For people, for people <laughs> visit, which is pretty cool. Yeah, that's nice. That's really cool. We'll include that screenshot in the. Can we include that? I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, I think we can. I thought that that's a nice uh, touch to it. And I even received like some sort of certificate. He sent me a certificate like on LinkedIn that I published on my LinkedIn uh, with like a, you know, a, a tree number, <laughs> uh, <laughs> my name and uh, hashtag M MFD6 and, and the day the tree was planted, uh, nice. which was pretty cool. Nice. That's a good way to end it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, all right, guys. So just uh, as always, we'll put the videos in the show notes, uh, clear to send slash 269. Um, yeah, and that's, that's it for today. Thank you for listening. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.